welcome you all to our fifth webinar, uh, wherein we would be discussing the telemental health as prevalent in the Indian public healthcare context. What are the options available and the measures needed to be undertaken to scale and make them successful? So, but before we get going, I would just like to lay down a few ground rules for our session. Uh, I will request everyone to keep their videos on so that uh, it is more engaging for the speaker. As of now, you all have been muted. We would be unmuting you towards the end of the session for the Q&A. The aim is uh, to not let the thoughts of the speaker get disrupted. If you have any queries, please type in in the chat box and uh, we will request our experts to take them on as and when they occur. Else, just raise your hand at the appropriate moment and we would request you for your query and have the expert answer it. We would also be sharing a link to a Google feedback form uh, in your mails as well as in the chat box. Please do fill it so that uh, we can get a sense of the impact of the webinar and what else we need to work upon to make it uh, more engaging. Now, uh, coming back on the topic of scaling technology-based mental well-being solutions in public health care in India. Now, recognizing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on not just one's physical, but also psychological and emotional health, the government announced a national perimental health program in this year's budget of 2022. According to the finance minister, the program will include a network of 23 telemental health centers of excellence. Nimhans will be the nodal center and IIT, IIT Bangalore will provide the technological support for the mental health program. As per the World Health Organization, an estimated 7.5% Indians suffer from mental health issues. Around 56 million Indians, according to the stats, suffer from depression and over 38 million people in India suffer from anxiety. The workforce of healthcare workers providing mental health care in India is also extremely lower than the desirable number of three psychiatrists or psychologists per uh, one lakh population. In India, there are 0 0.3 psychiatrists, 0 0.12 nurses, 0 0.07 psychologists, and 0 0.07 social workers in the mental health care segment, according to the WHO. So the situation is quite grim going by those figures, right? So the introduction of telemental health service will definitely help in countering the challenge of this health worker shortage. Worldwide, uh, pandemic-induced job losses, lack of social contact, and anxiety have been some factors that have led to increase in mental health issues. According to the Government of India's National Health Mission, 6 to 7 percent of the population suffers from mental disorders. It also notes that in four families is likely to have at least one member with a behavioral or mental disorder. And this is according to the stats of the World Health Organization. So, uh, and these families not only provide physical, emotional support, but also bear the negative impact of stigma and discrimination. Most of them remain untreated, Poor awareness about symptoms of mental illness, myths, and stigma related to it, lack of knowledge on the treatment availability, and potential benefits of seeking treatment are important causes for the high treatment gap. So we may not be able to address all the issues today in the webinar, but we definitely want to make a start by laying the seeds of awareness amongst our community of partners and ground workers so that we can start thinking on how we can contribute towards eradicating this malaise, right? So to add more context, we have a lineup of very eminent people here today who are already doing phenomenal work, I would say, in the field of mental health. We also have two platforms here who are working in the field of mental wellness with whom we have partnered. And we are supporting to take the next step forward in the space. So we would like to take this opportunity to present them here, create awareness about them amongst you, and at the same time, understand how they have gone about their task and their approach. Going forward, I would also request them to shed some light on how the NGO community can play a role in promulgating the benefits of their services, right? So we'll start with uh, the platform, which is named WISA. 
So we have here Smriti Joshi, who is a clinical psychologist with uh, 20 years of experience in the field of mental health. She has carved her niche in the area of digital mental health and remote delivery of mental health services. She's published papers and book chapters to share her knowledge and experience of working in this field. She has contributed to setting up of telecounseling guidelines for IACP and has trained hundreds of clinical and counseling psychologists practicing in India to quickly and smoothly transition to offering services via telemodalities during the course of the pandemic. She is considered to be a thought leader amongst her contemporaries and has been recognized nationally and internationally as a prominent leader in the field of tele-mental health service delivery. At present, uh, Smriti has been working as the chief clinical psychologist and member board of directors at Visa. Along with her, the co-speaker who would be there is Pranav. He, would, he is the director of strategic partnerships at Visa, and he's leading Visa's partnerships across Asia Pacific and the Middle East with large employers, insurers, and public health institutions to make mental health accessible for all. Pranav has eight years of experience working across for-profit and not for-profit organizations, handling various strategic initiatives. He has worked on partnerships in the social impact space in the past and has been instrumental in getting many initiatives like Samhita's Water Sanitation and Hygiene Platform, supported by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for raising $10 million over four years off the ground successfully. So without, uh, I think I've, it's been a monologue for the last seven, eight minutes. So without uh, wasting much time, I'll hand over the stage to both Smriti and Pranav. Over to you, Smriti and Pranav. Uh, thank you, uh, Sadhbirji, for such a generous and kind introduction and also setting up the context for our conversation today. I'll share my screen. And um, as I share my screen, if I can, for the benefit of the attendees, just um, give a brief introduction to what telemental health is or what digital health is. Um, basically, um, it is an umbrella term, which means that we are offering services using online modalities. Uh, and uh, there are there are two modes, asynchronous and synchronous. When we say synchronous, it means in real time, just the way we are talking right now, in real time. And asynchronous is when there is delayed messaging, where, like on emails or uh, on where you send a message on WhatsApp and uh, somebody reads it later. Uh, and uh, a wide range of services comes under telemental health. It is not just therapy. There is psychiatric services. There is psychiatric social work services. There is counseling. There is therapy. Even training uh, in the modality like we're doing. Some, if this was a training or a workshop, uh, Nimhans has been leading it with the ECHO uh, uh, you know, platform for the past couple of years, training uh, uh, you know, remote uh, ground workers and uh, general physicians and uh, registered medical practitioners in, det in detection of um, substance abuse related issues and helping them devise treatment plans and make it or each charging referrals to then the nodal bodies. So it is a very relevant field. It's we it's not new. It's been in the world for the past 40 years in, in uh, developed countries like US and UK and even in India, it's been around for uh, 10, 15, or maybe around 10, 15 years now. And um, ISRO and Apollo have been doing some great work with telehealth, but mental health somehow always takes, takes a backseat. And I think we have to make that noise. And I appreciate this platform that's helping us um, initiate this conversation on how all of us together can use these modalities to bridge the gap, the service user and service provider gap and the misery that people have to bear with uh, in their weight lines and lack of awareness and because of stigma, uh, where something can that could be prevented grows into a bigger illness. So uh, what is Visa? Visa is basically um, uh, if you know it is an it is an app for your everyday mental health, just like we say. So because you know WHO defines uh, health uh, uh, that it is good health across social, physical, mental, emotional aspects of one's life. It is not merely absence of mental illness. And if we are looking after our everyday mental health, just like we look after our everyday physical health, there are a lot of preventative benefits around it. 
it can also help with lowering the intensity of how we experience any current disorder that somebody may have and uh, visa has been rated uh, uh, as uh, the best app uh, on google play uh, it's been recognized by forbes as the top five innovations in 2020 and orca which is an nhs uk accreditation system for evaluating apps for safety clinical assurance safe content etc has repeatedly rated us for the past three years as one of the safest safest apps and during the pandemic they rated us as the best app for healthcare in 2020. So Visa is a cute little penguin. It is an avatar the chat of the chatbot that we have, but that is not the only thing that we offer. Uh, we have three, uh, if we can imagine it like a pyramid, you know, like a pyramid, then the chatbot lies at the bottom of the pyramid, which gives access to the maximum number of users. Any number of users can access it. We have around 4 million users accessing, accessing it as we talk at this point in time. It is a blend of AI guided listening and professional expert support. Uh, professional expert support. When we say that, we means that it is not completely rogue AI. It is non-generative. We have tried to keep it in a box. Uh, the pathways are designed. The scripts around offering mental health support are designed with the help of um, professionals on the team and our clinical advisors, which are globally recognized leaders in the field of mental health. And uh, we also are constantly using our data uh, and training data are uh, training our ai using those existing data sets of around 10 million conversations to improve its listening so it is not just a yes no question answer that happens in it you can actually write so if visa says how are you feeling you could actually write a 50 words 100 words paragraph on it so we are training it to identify concerns context the needs etc from your free text so it is as it is very much like speaking to an individual it is not just limited to how are you feeling select from good and bad options or not good and not bad options the second uh, thing that we have is uh, it has mental wellness tools and covers areas like anxiety sleep stress low mood postpartum depression lgbtq community concerns etc and what happens as a process if i can tell you is say if you say hello to visa by and advisor will ask you uh, some questions about your well-being it offers an assessment which is the phq9 g87 which is a basic screening for depression and anxiety and uh, and it also asks you what challenges brings you on visa and you can select from a couple of uh, buttons like work concerns relationship concerns low mood etc and it will use that context and what you tell visa to create a personalized recommendation so we are using precision engagement over here to drive the conversations it will make recommendations from evidence-based tools tools that i will offer to a client in my private uh, therapy settings or in a hospital settings those tools have been adapt adapted to be offered via uh, a digital uh, on a digital platform and we tested rigorously uh, with fo focus groups which are formed of people with lived experiences so it's like a co-designing experiment that we do with them and it passes through our uh, you know expert eyes of our clinical advisors and our own therapy team and only when we feel it is absolutely safe that somebody can say practice cbt reframing thought exercise only then we put it across for our users to try and then the third layer, which is the topmost layer of the pyramid, is the live chat sessions on text and on audio video. And uh, we have therapists based out of India and the US. So it gives a 24 by 7 coverage across seven days, across all most uh, time zones. And uh, uh, the therapists that are available are multilingual. Uh, uh, they can most of them are from india so they are very familiar with all the indian languages and uh, uh, it it for and it it covers everything from daily life stressors to uh, you know actually seeking therapy because we have licensed clinical psychologists resistors with the rci as well as uh, qualified uh, counseling and uh, psychotherapists and counseling psychologists uh, from accredited institutions in india now, what does, uh, like I explained this earlier, what AI guided listening is when, uh, am I still connected? Sorry, I had a power uh, issue. Oh, you, you're there, Smriti. If you could just uh, make it full screen, your yeah. representation. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, I didn't yeah. realize. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. 
I'm clicking slideshow. See, it's on slideshow. Bottom right corner will also. Wait, is yeah, is this better? Yes. Yeah, this looks better. Okay, so yeah. Um, so we have uh, AI guided listening, which I already uh, explained earlier. Like um, you begin and you enter the chatbot, and it will take some basic information. The most important thing to remember is it does not ask for any personal personal information. It will not ask you for your real name. It will not ask you for your email ID. It will not ask you for your telephone number. So we don't want any personally identifiable data with us. But what we want is truly to listen to an individual and then let uh, what works based on what the AI has been trained on and what evidence says will work for a particular concern, it makes those recommendations. We have a bespoke uh, uh, crisis escalation pathway where SOS terms like I, um, you know, where people express thoughts about dying or people uh, share about abuse or tra trauma, it will trigger an SOS pathway where one, it will help people with managing their overwhelm or panic or emotions in the current situation by doing a grounding exercise which is an evidence-based exercise to manage overwhelm it is a dialectical behavior therapy uh, uh, orientation based exercise and um, then it will uh, check on you and make recommendations to call connect you with certain helplines now these helplines could be say for our employer partners we have employer partners for uh, them it could be their uh, own EAP providers or doctors that they have in house or psychologists that they have in house. And for general direct to consumers, these helplines are lines which are existent in a particular geography. And we keep doing a check uh, or for, you know, from our own side to see if these helplines are really working or if these are just numbers published on the internet and you know you really can't get across. So we have helplines like uh, the TIS I call helpline or the Nimans helpline, which we know for sure are uh, functioning well and the SOS cases are immediately escalated, signposted to use the help of these helplines. Then there is, like I said, the digital self-care and the, to the tools could look like this. These are the tool packs. And then uh, you can schedule sessions with uh, your therapist or uh, your psychologist uh, using the uh, scheduler, which is within the app. Somebody, the AI guided is primarily free uh, a lot of tools are also free. There is a certain layer, uh, which is called the digital premium layer. And also the personalized therapy or coaching support comes at a fee. Somebody who subscribes to the personalized coaching support gets access to all of this. So the fee is not for per session, but it is for the entire stack of services that somebody is receiving. And we have about like uh, 150 evidence-based exercises and about... Uh, uh, and they they vary across uh, the the need uh, the spectrum of needs that people may bring in like sleep or improving your productivity growth nurturing your pregnancy etc. So we've tried and uh, you know created tools which can uh, kind of you know uh, help everybody who's coming in for support. So overall, right now, uh, uh, and we have seen that uh, from the numbers that we have, that it is uh, scaling mental health for millions. And just from the word of mouth, without much mar uh, marketing or actively engaging with advertisements, we already have had 500 million conversations, about 10 million li lives covered in all, and four mil 10 million lives co covered in all, including our uh, B2B partners. We've had 4 million users so far. 2 million cognitive behavioral therapy breakthroughs and uh, you know uh, a life changing email that we received around five years uh, four years back very soon after a launch which said that wiser prevented me from killing myself is something that motivated us to continue working on this product and today we have received 178 such feedbacks which say that wiser is helped them from uh, you know uh, acting on their urges to harm themselves in some ways, which is uh, uh, like uh, something that aligns even with the National Mental Health Mission, which says to prevent suicide and self-harm uh, uh, oriented actions in uh, for our own population. And now I'll ask Pranav to come and speak a little bit about our client and our research partners because he's been managing engagement for VISA and he can be a better person to speak on it. Thanks, Prithi. Uh so when we started Wiser, uh, you know, it primarily started as a B2C 
uh, app in 2017, right? And soon after COVID hit in 2020, we realized like there's a lot of potential to start working with many, many clients in the B2B space, right? And um, you can see all of these logos on the slide. And uh, currently we service more than 30 enterprise partners globally, right? And they're, 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 they typically fall under three main categories, right? So we have employers where we focus on employee wellness, right? And um, we also work with uh, insurance companies. And specifically after the pandemic, what uh, we started realizing is that a lot of the mental health claims started going up for insurance companies. So we can come in and, you know, come in from a risk prevention standpoint to help the insurance companies there. And um, the third uh, sort of partnership that we're now building and scaling up uh, also is uh, with public health institutions and healthcare providers. Um, and for us, even from our mission standpoint, you know, to access uh, so many people at scale, public health partnerships uh, make a lot of sense. Um, however, uh, you know, so, uh, I mean, so some, just to tell you a little bit about, I'll, I'll go into the depth of a few here, but NHS, for example, in the UK, the National Health Service, we've been working with them specifically to solve for the problem of the demand supply gap that exists in this space, right? Where people get waitlisted for therapy for up to six months even, right? And it's it's a lot of burden on the current sort of professionals, therapists there. And a, a lot of those problems can be actually solved by AI, right? And we're talking about like a lot of the low-grade issues, everyday mental health challenges. So a lot of people seeking for therapy, probably they didn't even need it in the first place. So we're able to solve that and we're able to reduce the cost burdens associated with traditional therapy by working with public health institutions. The other thing is that, you know, it also talks of our clinical rigor, right? Uh, the work that we've done with public health institutions, we're able to bring a very clinically safe, valid product out there in the market. And that is precisely why they want to work with us. Uh, we're also working uh, heavily with research and educational institutions. Right now, we're running a randomized control trial with Imperial College in London. Uh, and, you know, we're seeing some fantastic results today. Uh, in this space, we have 15 peer-reviewed journal, uh, journals that are either published or under a sort of publication right now as we speak. So a lot of, a lot of these things are changing as we speak uh, in, this, uh, in this space. Uh, Smriti, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, the other thing uh, was that, you know, uh, last year when the COVID second wave happened, we realized that at least in the Indian ecosystem, we started seeing that there was a lot of a uh, uh, lot of people reaching out to us. And specifically from a corporate standpoint, we added many more partnerships like with Bosch, Colgate, Palmolive, L'Oreal, etc. And the whole idea was that everybody is seeking for some solution, right, from a mental health perspective, but they're not get, getting the right support, right? So corporates, for example, might have gone for EAP, which is Employee Assistance Program. And um, it's not given them the right sort of support because there's, uh, like, there's, there's still stigma, there's, there's lack of anonymity in those resources that are offered. And those resources also come at a much later stage. So if somebody is really dealing with some clinical issue, only then they would access that kind of a resource. Whereas we come in much before and we sort of are able to support a much larger population. So uh, speaking specifically about uh, the, the case study with Ministry of Health Singapore, um, we began a relationship with them again in 2020. And the pandemic actually was something that led to it, where they realized that you know they wanted to give mental health coverage to every single citizen in Singapore. And so there was a big public health push and we realized that, you know, uh, we can, they had a platform where we integrated with, and it was a very easy sort of an integration that we could do, where we brought the chatbot on their platform, which is called Mindline. So even if today you go to mindline.sg and there is, you will see that, you know, do you want to talk to somebody, then the Visa chatbot sort of opens up. And the best part about this is that, you know, this uh, partnership has been growing. This is the second year of the partnership now. And again, we're talking to them to work with public health institutions like NUHS in the Singapore ecosystem. We're working with them with the Ministry of Education. So uh, to, to offer it to polytechnics and to students, et cetera, also. So that's how this is uh, sort of being built. And we're, we're, we're covering at least the entire population of Singapore. So that's it's like a very, very big partnership for us. Uh, Smithy, next slide. 
So uh, the next slide will actually talk about uh, our partnership with Accenture, right? And Accenture is our largest client from an employer standpoint, right? We're covering 500,000 people uh, in Accenture globally. And this is across 53 different countries. The partnership actually started in India. And we know that Accenture has always been a strong advocate for mental health. So they were already way ahead of the curve as opposed to other companies. But even then, you know, there was something that was missing. A lot of the accessibility was a big problem on mental health. A lot of the awareness on mental health was a big problem. That is why they reached out to us. And we are sort of working with them to build that in. Today, Accenture has access to an EAP provider. They have access to meditation or sleep uh, sort of app called Calm, which a lot of you might have heard of, but that wasn't enough support because it was just bringing support either at the beginning of the spectrum or towards the late end of the spectrum. And when Visa comes in, it sort of helps fill the gap right in the middle. So that's what we're doing with them, but we're also working with them to sort of you know run webinars, do induction sessions. We are doing uh, campaigns with them, and that is actually you know changing the game, right? We're involving senior stakeholders, members from their team to talk about mental health, make it a lot more accessible to people, break the stigma, and that's actually bringing the cultural revolution. And we want to do that a lot more now, specifically with the Indian clients as we go uh, forward. Smriti, back to you. Yeah, thank you, Prana. And uh, just wanted to reiterate that um, how uh, digital mental health services, which we had never once imagined would exist. Uh, I mean, I was into private practice for 10 years before I entered the field and I was a skeptic myself. But it was a brief stint away from my own country in a different country trying to uh, get connected back with my clients and trying to fulfill my own professional needs that telemental health came into Came, for, came to my rescue, you know, and that's when I realized how valuable it is for both the professional and the provider and how it truly beautifully bridges the accessibility gap as well. And, um, uh, and Visa is, uh, uh, like Pranav also explained, that it is, our system is uh, something that is, um, you know, blended care model. It is very affordable and uh, uh, it is... Uh, very scalable and like we are we are we are a team of five people when we began and today we are around 100 people in uh, three different geographies but yet we are supporting around like four million plus lives uh, for our b2c sector plus another three to four in our b2b uh, with b2b partners and i think the most enduring cases are the public health uh, support that we, that we are being able to provide because that is at a population level. These are the people who really need it, who ha really have those big accessibility concerns where they may not have an insurance or may they, they may not have an employer backing them, but where the government and at the ground root level, the, the departments are trying and help people living in their uh, local areas. So in India, we have touched almost 600,000 lives through our app. And uh, uh, I remember during the pandemic, peak of the pandemic we were approached uh, Smriti, Smriti just to pause you I think we overshot the time by oh, a sorry, bit sorry. so a request in case you can wind up uh, we, this is one of the this is just the yeah. second last slide so I'll quickly just share that we are kind of working on we've already released a version in, version in Spanish which is uh, and we are working on a translation in Hindi we are also looking for grants that will help us support the translation in local languages for the chatbot that will help with the accessibility barrier if there is even though the English that Visa uses is a is very basic level, six to eight grade level uh, language that it offers. And we've provided uh, support to medical he healthcare providers as well in the last year. And I think, uh, like I had mentioned in the beginning, that we really aligned with the na national mental health mission policies around providing universal access to healthcare and increasing access and utilization of mental health services, prevention of suicide, uh, I think uh, there is a lot and how we just shared our use case around uh, uh, being blended with any ecosystem. Uh, I think that uh, uh, helps us be ready to contribute to any government initiative that, that, that requires us to be a partner uh, in uh, fulfilling the objectives that the national mental health policy has laid. And um, I don't know why my slide is not changing. I'm sorry. There was one more. Uh, okay, and um, for uh, I think for our NGO partners, um, uh, 
they go through a lot of stress and burnout in their work and we would love if we could help their employees deal with compassion fatigue and ban- burnout that could help them in turn offer their compassion and support to people they work with and of course if there are any ways where we could help the people they serve is better we would uh, really be uh, you know be happy to do that in any possible ways we have thank you right uh, thanks smriti thanks pranav for the great insights about your application and the work which you are doing i am sure it was uh, good enlightenment for all the people who are here and in case there are any queries please do type in in the chat boxes so that we can take them on we can do it at a later stage also uh we also have dr nadkarni we finally have him here yeah i am there from meghat and i am here on ashish uh, dr ashish satav's uh, uh, computer but the camera uh, the connection here is very dubious so i am glad that i am at least heard hi right, sir i am i am so grateful that you are here so <laughs> we had to start the session uh, because we are getting late uh so uh coming back to you dr natkarni i think uh the lesser said the better and so we very excited to have him here he is a household name when it comes to mental health not only in maharashtra but across the country uh, dr natkarni has been in active psychiatry practice since the last three decades focused completely on spreading awareness about mental health uh, uh just a second uh, so he's a uh, been an active psychiatrist like i told you he's focused completely on spreading awareness about mental health he's taken the concept to almost every conceivable social stratum and continues to work diligently in diverse settings in his individual consultations he sees on an average 40 clients a day in a 10 hour schedule so that's a hell lot of a work he conducts training programs for top corporate executives across the country mentors young artists athletes players singers to optimize their performances he addresses groups of parents teachers on a range of topics he trains elite commando forces and also teaches post graduates in psychiatry and psychology he has contributed to the national planning commission as a consultant and also is on the board of listed companies as an independent director so the list goes on i think we'll get tired if we just keep on talking about dr nadkarni he also pioneered the institute for psychological health it's a unique ngo where more than 70 mental health professionals work under one roof in addition to giving care to individuals they also operate a number of support groups and work on continuous educational projects and services that range from a full fledged audio visual unit to a telephonic helpline metra iph is also associated with reputed voluntary organizations such as search in gadchiroli where he is presently uh, calling from pratham in mumbai and sangat in goa so so the next speaker whom we have in uh, line is uh, the app called i will where ashish is representing uh, the platform he is the co-founder and head of partnerships at i will and esi clinic he holds an mba and bsc honors from banaras hindu university prior to co-founding i will ashish founded one of india's first startups in the ayush healthcare space he started up manufactured and exported ayurvedic wellness products to many countries in europe and the middle east his startup was acquired by a leading fmcg and ayurveda company in india ashish is also an active member of two ngos working for the education of the underprivileged in uttar pradesh and himachal pradesh so i'll hand over the stage as of now to ashish to tell us more about this platform called i will over to you ashish yeah so dr anand is in the name of samir palaskar right now i hope you can hear me sir I, I, if you can yeah, respond, and sir. Uh, i think you can see me also i can see your video sir that's that's so nice sir so we can finally uh, see you now so great to see the <laughs> smiling face sir and uh, the, the the first question which i wanted to ask you dr natani we wanted to tell us in brief about the great work that you already doing uh, i purpose of this webinar that is uh, how to use uh, tele psychiatry in mental health with the same mission so we are having a 
project with uh, Dr. Ashish Sathav and uh, his team and during the times of COVID, where all of us started working online and offline for our individual consultations and uh, counseling purposes. And we at uh, our uh, organization, Institute for Psychological Health, in Thane, Pune, in Nashik, we are, we function across three cities in Maharashtra. So when we started working online and offline, an idea came in our mind that why not use now this kind of setting to take mental health towards people who are in need but who have no access to mental health care. And then we searched for uh, partner organizations. And we are currently working with three partner organizations. One is Mahan at Melghat. Second is Sane Guruji Rubunale at Kinwat with Dr. Ashok Belkhode. And then there is a trust that is working in the Maharashtra Gujarat area near Dang district. So what is this model? The model is that we started working with all these three organizations that are already working in the space of physical health in their own way. And we started empowering their teams that consists of their medical officers, their program managers, and their community health workers who work at the grassroots level. Now we started taking regular classes for them online from the month of September. And the idea was to work with these people to empower them slowly in all the mental health issues. Just to give you an example of Melghat, that addiction problems are in plenty over here. Deliberate self-harm, what we used to call as suicide, is a major concern here. And these are obviously mental health issues. So when we started working and empowering these uh, health workers, what happened was that we started working online. So I am here for last four years to buy an online and offline training. Today, uh, training is on actually. So today with all the Arogya Dutz and the project supervisors, we have already formed WhatsApp groups. So what will happen is that they will have direct access to us for their problems with our direct training with online sessions. And what we plan to do later on is that in Mahan OPD, on online basis, our consultants will also be there. So they will participate from say Thane or Pune and uh, the medical officers here and the entire medical team will then be working together. Along with that, See, nothing can work in isolation. So we are here planning different community initiatives. So daily we take it as as the addition, the approach hasn't changed. We have the community of the session in physical presence. How is the reality is some explosion? Right. Uh, so I think uh, uh, we'll move on with the next speaker. Right. So uh, since this is we're talking about again uh, talking or working with the uh, people who have very less uh, access to such a help at the moment. So what I would do is uh, we, we, we also have uh, amongst us uh, Dr. Aarti Bang from Search Foundation, right? So she's also been uh, working very intimately uh, in Garchiroli with the tribals of Garchiroli. So I was wanting to ask Aarti again about her experience of working with the tribal people of Garchiroli. 
and uh, i wanted to ask her to share some major learnings from that and also going forward what does she see the major areas in the space of tele mental health that we need to be mindful about and what are the major challenges that she sees especially in the process of reaching out to such india three population the basically the backward population where nobody reaches so good evening everyone um as uh, most of you know i work at uh, search which is located in gadchiroli and uh, this district forms the easternmost border of maharashtra and 40% of the entire population is um, tribals um, and uh, currently i and one another psychiatrist are the only two psychiatrist for the entire district so i i just thought of putting together few slides to just share uh, the work that we have been doing here so uh, there i would i would think that the mental health team at search has four main priorities the first is of course the mental health hospital based services which includes um, clinic consultations and indoor admissions second would be the mental health village services Uh, mainly to address uh, several uh, common mental health disorders psychotic disorders etc third is uh, our community based addiction management program which currently is focused only on alcohol uh, use disorders and the fourth is um, a very recent foray in uh, research uh, tribal mental health research so i thought i'll take some time to show the evolution of the mental health team here so the very first uh, uh, i would say step of the mental health team as we know now started in 1993 when there was a district wide movement and there was a very popular and strong demand from the women of the district for a legal ban on the alcohol and um, the people they they asked search to support this movement and also facilitate uh in in like you know in implementing the plans that is when it started but then later on we realized that only uh, working on the legal implementation side of alcohol is not enough because people who are anyway addicted to alcohol and who are facing uh, troubles with hazardous harmful drinking uh, we need to provide treatment for them and that is how we started we entered uh, in alcohol addiction management so that is one thing but on a more formal level uh, in in the year 2010 and uh, dr narkarni is also part of this webinar but um, we i personally am immensely grateful for him and uh, the entire uh, team from uh, nagpur mumbai and chandrapur that he mobilized and uh, for the first time search started conducting once monthly clinics of mental health um, here at search and then i joined in 2016 and now what we see is that we have like i said earlier we have a hospital based facility we also have a very strong community alcohol addiction management program and we have also recently started um, uh, you know thinking that maybe before we jump into the solutions and interventions we need to estimate we need to estimate what the extent of the problem of uh, mental disorders is in the community so this is about mental health team in short um i i know i think uh, sadbir did mention about the challenges uh, uh, for me to like share the challenges that we face here so i'll just quickly run through these slides but as you can see that the patient numbers that we treat as part of our community alcohol addiction management programs are huge so um, you know 2000 more than 2000 patients this year and 3000 patients last year one of the these are some of the pictures from our community addiction management programs uh, so here what i would like to share is that so yes we a patient comes to the clinic at the uh, village level and we treat them him her the family members the main problem that arises is that often these communities are very difficult to reach like it's very difficult to get to those villages it's time consuming the roads are not always great and one one big gap is a regular follow up and as we know that be it mental health or uh, be it addiction problems a uh, regular intensive follow up can create a big difference in the improvement outcomes of the patient 
so often our our counselors have to travel 2 hours 3 hours to reach a village where they would see 10 patients and um, it's not very cost effective so um, yes but i'll come to this challenge at the in the last slide this again is a overview of our block counseling clinic which we have set up in all 12 blocks of garchiroli so there are 12 blocks uh, and we have one counseling clinic which is done once weekly in each of these blocks so again you can see that the cumulative uh, patient consultations in the last 3 years have been close to 7000 uh, these are some of our pictures from the the research that we did early in 2019 and these are some of the cumulative uh, patient numbers so just for the last year as part of all our approaches we have treated around 10000 we have provided around 10000 patient consultations so that is a huge number but all of them are physical uh, follow ups and physical consultations the challenges i would say is that anyway there the care seeking is very low for mental health disorders it is even more pronounced uh, for garchiroli because uh, the tribal hamlets the villages are really far off there is very poor transport facilities available and as many of you would know that there is also a strike going on for the st bus services so i we can see it reflecting in our hospital uh, follow ups that uh, you know it has really mm. gone down so that is becoming a huge problem and when we go to the villages as part of our regular follow up the patients uh, they say that yes we you know we felt better four months back when we took the treatment but now you know we just sadhani nahi aane ke liye and the uh, the private uh, services are charging exorbitant um, uh, fares so i would say in light of covid and light of such situations a uh, tele follow up or uh, internet based online follow up would have been great but that's not possible second is that we have started trying telephonic follow ups like just audio follow ups and our counselors often report that patients are not interested in talking they often say ki uh, okay bolo jo aapko bolna hai abhi humko kaam pe jana hai so uh, i don't know how to like really circumvent that problem there are many who would be interested but patients uh, there are some people who would just not feel connected with just a audio call and uh, the internet is very thin and like really bad in many many of the villages so i don't know uh, offline service it's not possible at least not that i know of third is more related to the actual that the uh, the science of uh, psychology and psychiatry is that we need to adapt many of these things many of the therapies and um, uh, uh, tools to more local context then it, it, sometimes it's gondi which is the language and sometimes even to suit the culture there are some things that are just not culture adaptable so that is the third issue and uh, we know that anyway the ratio of mental health the of healthcare providers to diseases anyway low it's even more bad for psychiatrists and psychologists it's very it's pathetic and when it comes to a place like garchiroli where there are so many prof- professionals who want to pro- who want to contribute to the cause but obviously you can't like they you can't expect them to leave everything and come down here just say for a day so like i the last point is where there are many people many mental health professionals who who want to contribute who have a genuine motivation to contribute but it's not always possible to arrange for a physical um, you know um, uh, visit or um, coordinated uh, thing so how can we use uh, tele mental health services in a sense that it will uh, really overcome that gap it will also become it, it it will also enable so many other people around the state to chip in and contribute so yes this was in short regarding my understanding and some of the challenges that i think so thanks thanks arti i think that they are actually a lot of food for thought before we delve into this space so uh, go, going going back uh, to dr nat perni uh, so uh, you were talking about your experience right so uh, yes. maybe maybe uh, i can ask uh, go on to the next question which i can uh, which i have for yeah. you is uh, how would, do you yeah i would Please. i would just respond to uh, arthi's presentation right and uh, 
see uh, arti is doing uh, such a fantastic fantastic work over there thank you and i happen to be as she mentioned uh, part of it uh, in the beginning years Yes. And then actually we were waiting for Arthi to finish her post graduation and go back to the jungles of search. <laughs> so when she did that, we kind of handed over the entire community mental health portfolio to her, and yes. she has been doing exceedingly well in that. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you very much. These, these kind of challenges that all of us have. See, the challenges are going to be there. You know, for example, I was. Uh, talking to all these health workers at uh, meghat just now that we will have to de jargonize our entire counseling information and uh, work out paradigms which are very very local and they are culturally aligned to people and uh, that is what i try i had uh, try to uh, do even at search where i have been associated with their activities from 1993 onwards so that is something that we have to do all the time because unless we contextualize all our jargons and align them with the local culture people are not going to understand us and the health seeking behavior is going to be that much less from people also what will be very important for us is to understand that we will have to work at all levels so my point is that tele psychiatry your uh, opd follow up your uh, uh, training people online is a addition it is not working at the place of your direct intervention it is going to aid your direct intervention so if you can network these aspects into your direct community work then that is going to give us a lot of uh, positive outcome just to give you an instance we are working with a uh, uh, organization called americare india in mumbai uh, in suburban slums and basties these people have eight vans that are uh, uh, that are uh, maintained by one mbbs doctor uh, one uh, health worker one uh, pharmacist come helper and one driver come helper so there is a team of four per van and there are eight such vans we have been working with them for last 6 uh, months again empowering them with different aspects of uh, mental health care delivery and uh, we are two months away from a stage where these people will be running the opds and whenever they have a problem that mbbs person will can be virtually direct in touch with psychiatrist of iph so since their patient population is more related to the lifestyle disorders even in slums of mumbai diabetes cholesterol and hypertension what we try to do was empower all these people into looking at the psychological aspects of all these lifestyle disorders and therefore improving their service delivery and we also work we are working with the community health workers that they have on the van how they can they can inculcate the stress factors and find out people who are having distress at the community level we also have uh, are having training with all our partners on a very effective level of psychopharmacology using only 6 to 7 molecules to treat all common mental disorders and also evolving a referral system where our psychiatrist is virtually available and then if required you can go to the psychiatrist directly now what is very important is that we have to spread our network very very consistently and uh, not jump too much what i have been doing in one of these areas of our antaranga project is for example malar marve malauni area of mumbai uh, we started networking with 50 general practitioners of the area and now we are empowering them with basic mental health knowledge so i went there i talked to them i had small group meetings of them area wise and now 30 of them have enrolled for a online course 
so what will be very important is that you are using direct communication you are bonding you are establishing relationship and then you are using virtual means to empower them. so i think this is the blend that i am talking about so if we have this kind of a blend where your bonding helps the online offline combination helps and the community arm of your work starts getting a bolster from all these modern uh, uh, means that we have one more observation that uh, the whatsapp groups in follow up as arthi said that in their area uh, there was hardly any response but in uh, urban maharashtra for our muktangan de addiction center in pune our online groups have been a huge success and that is because we have again uh, coupled it with the direct intervention also even during the lockdown times so our recovered patients in 22 cities across maharashtra they are combining online offline model and same thing we are doing with wives of alcoholics very interestingly when you have this online offline mode it works much better and then you have a weekly meeting in a very small group offline and you have a monthly meeting online so we had this online meeting of our sahachari we call them wives of alcoholics and i had the uh, i mean it was very nice for me to address 400 sahacharis in one single meeting across the state of maharashtra so that gives them a booster so you can use online as a booster to offline sometimes you can use offline as a booster to online and the online offline mode if we can get integrated we can do so much better in the sphere of mental health because we will have to de clinicalize mental health mental health has been clinicalized too much and these are all attempts whatever arti is doing whatever we are trying to do that is to de clinicalize mental health and unless we do that we mental health professionals are not going to be sufficient right over to you thank you right. so 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 uh, i would say you are suggesting a hybrid model right for both offline and online so if i talk about these tech based solutions that we have on showcase here talking about wise we have i will who will come in after uh, this uh, talk with you sir so what how, how do you see these uh, players playing up here what sort of model do you see sir wherein these players can be taken to the masses or these uh, platforms can be scaled up and so what role can these solutions play to boost the step which has been announced by the finance minister sir what role do you envisage here uh you are you are seeing the roles of these companies which are coming up with apps and all yes correct sir uh, a very important point here will be that how they can transform themselves into different dialects and local languages right here i am sitting in melgha talking to you and there is a language called kurku over here correct and, and unless there is something in kurku <laughs> nobody would be using that now the point is that no uh, no spray start up starts with kurku it always starts with english you always right. first address the niche market and therefore right. if you have a start up then you will have to change the definition of market and then you have you have to change definition of business also so <laughs> what will be very important for startups in this space is to redefine the definition of business profit and all allied terms right and then only we will have a startup in korku otherwise right. all these people they start from a niche market and then as and when required they slowly move into the other market so if you are if you really want to be socially relevant then you have to start from kurku and go to english now for that you require a strength of character in addition to having good capital so mental health ventures are very they they will require a very different fiber right and i hope that all these people who are in this space 
start showing that kind of fiber sooner than later because for us every model of this virtual working slowly becomes a coffee table book it lies there it gives a credence to your drawing room but is hardly used and used by a few elite people so i see that as a very important threat if i use that word too strongly i am very very sorry about it. but you know it should a lot of panacea and very little of impact so then you are what you are doing is you are only promoting figures to promote it so i am very sorry if i am sounding harsh but then the point is that it has to go the way people want it and therefore the entrepreneur has to be entrepreneur of the people so that is a very important point as far as government initiatives are concerned i think a government initiative tells us that government has started thinking somewhat in our way that's all that is right now which means that we have to make ourselves more active now that the government is thinking of supporting us <laughs> now and we should not wait that now that government has entered government will do a lot of things because as we are very well aware with all our experiences even of the mental health act <laughs> and its execution why why go further we have an act which is hardly active right on the ground so we know we know and see i am not ridiculing government i am very well aware of the limitations that government machinery has and therefore i am saying and i also know with successive governments the emphasis on public health dwindling rather than increasing and therefore we we know their limitations so if they are with us with thought let's be doubly active and triply active that is what i feel about it with very valid points sir i think i totally agree totally in sync with you but then uh, we need to how we still need to i think devise a way how uh, since a platform is there maybe if we can devise a way if we can take it to the masses to the ground i think uh, that would be the way ahead but very valid points sir we have to start thinking about the population first rather than the figures so i think uh, that is the biggest lesson which i take from there so we we'll just uh, uh, pause uh, our conversation uh, with you sandeep i would I, yes. i would i would like to add one last point and possibly sure. then we can uh, we can stop sure. Uh, sure. and uh, now the network has been grateful so i take advantage uh, for a couple of minutes uh, i want to share one of our experiences at iph uh we started our own audio visual unit almost 12 years back and we started working on creating software about mental health through our audio visual unit around 6 5 years back we launched our own uh, youtube channel called avahan iph and slowly without any kind of external help uh, we have developed a studio uh, sound recording studio complete post production and editing facility and we have been consistently adding material on to our youtube channel during the covid times just today we have crossed 111000 subscription so during the covid times we very consistently put software on all these platforms so let's not limit ourselves to these kind of uh, things that we have how we can use something like youtube more effective how mental health organizations can have their own audio visual arms and consistency is very important today at our channel we have a portfolio of more than 650 entries so somebody who goes there you know gets a lot of variety it's not four videos five videos 10 videos that you look at and then you say nothing to do that and week after week week after week you need to add to that software 
this is something that we have been doing with whatever resources we have and very important point is that resources or lack of it is not an excuse for quality you can look at our products of avan ip uh, please subscribe our channel and see that we are giving fantastic hd quality in our work with the kind of meager resources that we have and that is something which is important to use the virtual space to maintain the momentum of your community work i'll just give one example and stop we have a activity that is run across maharashtra called ved vocational education direction and harmony now this activity we are running for 30 years and it is run across 10 cities in maharashtra so here this is a platform or an event for students teachers and parents and you interact live with real idols real role models who can be role models of values role models of coping and role models of constructive approach towards life now because of covid we have to shift the entire uh, event on to the virtual platform of youtube so when you will subscribe avahan ip page our channel which is free please go to two files one is called as global ved and second is called as national ved so what we did was we replicated the entire event on youtube and that gave us consistency in spite of covid so my point is using all these virtual platforms to maintain the tempo and consistency of whatever you are doing at the level of community thank you thanks sir thanks sir wonderful wonderful insights sir i think there is so much uh, to take from you i think we need to get on uh, another conversations to understand this field much better sir i think that can happen one on one with you sir but uh, while pausing you here sir we have another couple of speakers here uh, we have uh, ashish from i will uh, who i'll request him to share his uh, slides and uh, take us through his journey and after that uh, we will also have ms archana kapoor from the smart community radio network which i feel is also a very strong uh, method of tackling mental health so we will be going over that so i'll hand over the stage to ashish now to maybe share uh, your journey now ashish over to you ashish thanks thanks sadbir and thanks ect grant for organizing this uh, dr anand it was a great uh, i'm mean, learning listening to you a full stack knowledge as we call it full stack is a technology word so it was a full stack knowledge end to end and uh, dr arati uh you're doing some phenomenal work and um, i'll connect offline will i hope we'll get a chance to work together uh, i'll come to that later and and great work um that wisa is doing so happy to see that and so happy that i'm presenting uh, our work today so we uh, at i will i'm presenting i will our organization and we at i will do believe that uh innovation and technology should be used to assist and further enhance the capability of public healthcare system public mental health care system and community mental health care system and then only it is very useful or it is you know worth doing all the effort so now i'll present i will what we are doing here and this is the philosophy uh, with which i will care was developed from our uh, and it is a offshoot of our platform which is commercial platform i will so i will care is totally pro bono and not for pra- profit platform that is working and will be working with uh, public mental health care systems and also uh, community mental health care system so to start with i'll present some work done until now so we started working with governments during the pandemic first wave and we worked with three states 
at a state level, which is Maharashtra National Health Mission, Haryana National Health Mission, and in Rajasthan with their uh, digital system that was addressing the uh, public mental health and public health system largely. And then we also work deeply with 12 districts and some startups that were, you know, that work with large number of and large number, say, uh, say population on gig economy uh, that mm, works on ground. And we scaled within eight weeks from 100 sessions a day to 4,000 sessions a day. Oh, and we serve more than five lakh sessions uh, during the first wave itself. And good thing is that 50% of the population that we serve and those who took sessions were rural population. And we covered almost 15 languages, not all, almost uh, total 15 languages uh, from Northeast to North India to um, East and West, all parts. And the primary beneficiaries of our work were frontline worker, healthcare worker, COVID patients, and also general population, um, including migrant workers and farmers. So this is something which we did during the wave one of pandemic. And then we continued our work throughout, and we are still working with a lot of public mental health systems. And how we do, did it is very important. So we used our you know, on-ground work experience and we involved, like Dr. Anand Natkarni, uh, Natkarni said that, you know, like involving local people and those who are doing on-ground work, whether they are um, mental health care, uh, uh, social workers or volunteers or doctors or psychologists who are working on ground and, you know, ASHA workers and other healthcare facilitators, you know, involving them, involving district level administration and involving even higher level of say state level, you know, uh, stakeholders to, you know, design something and create something which works for them. And that is why we, what we came up with is a very modular and very, you know, a different solution. So, so I'll just quickly give you a walkthrough of how it works. So it starts with triaging. Both, uh, it can work, and a triaging is done both over web or app through a bot or for those who don't use smartphones and are not technology conversant for them, say farmers, say um, migrant workers, um, rural um, population, we have also developed an IVR-based triaging system to assess their mental health with help of an automated IVR-based or bot-based assessment. And th those are uh, based on global standard assessment, self-reporting assessments. And then depending on what the assessment tells about their issue severity, either they can go for a, if they are a smartphone user, they go for a computerized com uh, cognitive behavior therapy tools and content and self-help section, or they can connect directly to a counselor on call, which is um, available in 15 languages. And this is very much suitable for rural population and you know, uh, people who don't use smartphone and still use feature phones. Now, those who are diagnosed with moderate to severe issue, we have structured therapy program for them or we also facilitate you know, them to reach to an offline center locally and connect to district mental health program or district um, hospitals where mental health admission or you know, treatments are available and also with tertiary care center. And this is focused on long-term treatment uh, for, for patients who need critical care and uh, who also need to be directed to offline setups. 
so the this is a simple flow uh, everything that is on ivr we couldn't have a screenshot of that but um, on app we have um, assessments and then we have you know like self help section which is bot based but still it only uh, is based on cbt exercises that can help uh, that people can use at their own convenience and pace and then we have helpline and also therapy program and also integration with district mental health programs tertiary care center community and, and um, providers and also ngos uh, that provide last mile help to people who need critical care now you know taking this further during this engagement of last two years we had a opportunity to work at all you know like possible four layers of public health care system so starting with state level nhm where we started with integrating our technology solution to their existing system which was 1075 national uh, helpline and we were the first to bring in uh, option number 4 in 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 national mental uh, national health helpline launched by central government so option 4 was for um, connecting to a psychologist immediately and that was provided by us it was in multiple languages but it was mostly in um, haryana maharashtra and rajasthan it was very actively um, you know um, disseminated by uh, these state, three state governments after this we also worked with 12 district level uh, administration and, and municipal corporation their focus was different their focus was you know like uh, facilitating and providing mental health services to frontline workers and also providing uh, these services to general public very actively and here you know and and at each stage our solution and what we were doing with them was little different so here they already had some solution you know already because in pandemic every second day some new protocol were coming new services be, were being launched so uh, we did not uh, bring in another service rather we focused on integrating with their system and helping them build capacity or enhance capacity and also training right people who could add value to the mental health care services being provided during this period and then also at district mental health program especially in haryana this is where we you know help district mental health program you know uh, provide continuous a uh, support to those who uh, have severe issue or those who need continuous support after you know their part is done especially in the um, treatment uh, on by medicines or admission and also the other way around we help a lot of people reach to district mental health program you know those who really need it and all was done through our you know uh, triaging and reporting system which was a lot automated and we continuously pivoted 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 everything during this period and the last were asha worker and anm workers we worked with them very actively and very closely during this and we provided them counseling service and also trained them to help people reach to the right services so these were the four layers where we worked now i'll quickly because um, keeping time in mind i'll first present a case study of where we helped in a big way asha workers and nagarwadi workers in district of mandya so uh, in we started working with them uh, right at the beginning of wave 1 when immediately the uh, first lockdown was imposed so district mandya reached out to us and they wanted to provide a service first for asha workers and anm because they were working in field especially in the rural areas so and they wanted it very fast so our challenge and our work was first you know to make a good team of local psychologists who can speak 
their dialect their local dialect and th- those who understand the local context of mandya district which was very typical they had a lot of uh, migrant workers coming back they had uh, so many challenges other challenges as well now very actively we did inbound and outbound calls to them and within a month almost every asha worker was touched by our team and a lot of them i would say 80% of them took counseling properly and it helped them a lot and also parallelly what we did was to help asha workers and train asha workers to identify the people at risk from mental health perspective by using the standard assessment tools over the ivr uh, cloud telephony based ivr system and then refer them to the right people whether it is district mental health program a tertiary care pro, uh, center or to our helpline and what we saw is uh, we were getting more than 100 to 200 calls from farmers and migrant workers daily because of asha workers it we 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 uh, also saw two phenomenal things that there was a nationwide strike of asha workers during this period but 30% of asha workers in mandya did not go to strike because of the help that we provided them and our help did not included and you know this was a coincidental that um, we had a reporting system where we could flag you know if there is something serious to the district administration and this reporting system became a system of reporting almost everything through asha workers to district administration including you know shortage of supplies of um, sanitization material or anything medication anything now this was a, the reason they felt that okay we don't need to go uh, for strike because we are getting the kind of help we want and you know and second high point was when district magistrate of mandya in a press conference mentioned that he and most of the senior officers are also using this helpline in in a, in a um, press conference he mentioned this that and they all are finding it very helpful so you know uh, this solution was such it was designed and you know uh, multiple time curated in a very short time it helped uh, farmers it helped anms and asha workers and it also helped is officers my second case study is very interesting uh, we and this in, in this is around uh state level uh, machinery and district level machinery where we work here challenge was very different um state level wanted solution for wide you know like population everybody district level wanted for uh, frontline worker and healthcare worker first and then also general public and you know like mm, uh, in in municipal corporations wanted for focus groups or or say focus population of covid 19 um, patients and other so we quickly you know kind of designed something which was very modular it starts with triaging and it it was uh, through ivr system it was in multiple languages even ivr of triaging was in multiple languages and then we also created you know um, white label Uh, web based uh, chat based plus helpline uh, solutions for multiple municipal corporation and this was for urban so we tried to be inclusive inclusive means for rural and urban equally effective and also integrating with an existing systems of especially with the uh, national level helplines so and we implemented this very successfully either in parts or in full some wanted full some wanted only one particular part of it say triaging or or someone wanted just a white label web space which were urban cities uh, and and some wanted full stack 
and some wanted just the integration of immediately connecting to the right psychologist who speaks the local language even in haryana uh, a typical rural worker or or we worked in maharashtra so, uh, as dr anand said uh, the di- local dialect is so important so we had multiple even in, when, when we uh, engaged marathi counselors so we engaged uh, you know um, counselors from various part of the maharashtra so that they cover every even like local dialects very well and we did more than 250k sessions and every solution could be deployed and was deployed within two days so um we worked really and you know it was very different for what we usually do and what our usual business is but the intent was you know to uh, find a solution and to innovate you know like doing a thing in a way that is effective and useful for the end user and now third case study uh, uh, ashish is, uh, sorry to pause yes, yeah, i i know i know yeah, i know so uh, so uh, in in one minute i'll finish so third yeah. case study is very very interesting because it, it was outcome of what we did very nicely and effectively with the government so by sheer word of mouth and working with us and seeing the effectiveness gurugram district administration has partnered with us for providing the total 360 degree solu- uh, solution plat- for their mental health program it, it it is it starts with again a bot based triaging or ivr based triaging it has cbt based bot which is ai uh, uh, which has ai features and which will be developing it is currently in english bringing in hindi within 3 months and bringing in marathi also within 6 months it has helpline which connects with immediately with a counselor who speaks local language and it is absolutely free and then we have district mental health program referral both ways those uh, who need uh, critical care or those who need uh, you know like continuing support by a psychologist and now what we are doing is we are integrating our technology in psc and csc and also developing the system for asha and anm workers who get help and also help right, uh, people get the right help and also the last layer is integrating all the tertiary local tertiary care center and ngos and you know uh, serious uh, issue care providers to integrate in this app so that both ways you know uh, referral is very easy for the uh, needy person now i'll talk, talk about challenges challenges are immense in working with public mental health care system or community health care system so if we think that there is no technology or if we don't think that there are no processes if we think that there, a lot of work has not been done already a lot of work has uh, and and they are not putting effort that is not right so what uh, what our approach is that we do not try to fit our product in that, their system rather we work with them and we have a very modular apo- approach and a very local context approach to develop a solution co create a solution with them and that is why you know um, at every level even we have uh, partnered with maharashtra nhm uh, a five days back and starting to work both in the rural and district like garchiroli we are starting with yavatmal and pune and within six months we will be working in every single district of maharashtra to first to co create to understand what's needed where and then you know implement solution and that that would be very fast so far as speed is our um, you know like startup uh, solution now why we are here we are here to partner and i'm really uh, looking for um, partnerships with excellent organizations who are working in already in community and mental health care space so we would love to partner with you co create learn from you take your guidance in in creating solution creating uh, you know road map which is very local very uh, fit to the context of the city or area 
where you are working with that and we will and everything we want to do should be evidence and you know like very effective that's the um, core uh, philosophy and uh, again at the last i would repeat that all this work is not part of our usual business and this is not for profit and we are doing it despite being uh, uh, you know mm, a startup from um, we are doing it for last two years and we wish to do it continuously and success would come in our vision only when we partner with the people who are working on ground uh, thanks a lot for patiently listening to me uh, over to you sadeep thanks to tanashins for those uh, wonderful thoughts and uh, the amazing work that is being done it always feels proud to be associated with people like wise up people like i will and also with the next speaker who is there i know we have already overshot the time but then just at the cost of uh, your time i am taking that leave this because because of some network issues uh, we uh, messed up our time plan but then uh, yeah th this is our last speaker which we have today so we have miss archana kapoor from the smart community radio network uh, telling us about how this popular media of community radio can also be used very effectively to address this malaise of mental uh, health help so she is a delhi based filmmaker and community media specialist she is the founder director of a non profit seeking modern applications for real transformation that uses modern and traditional media to provide information and voice to the marginalized uh, communities she runs a community radio station in noo which has received many awards and has been covered extensively by both national and international media her effort is to provide an environment for acquiring knowledge and developing abilities to organize and influence the direction of social change through all forms of media she will also be assisted in her talk for next 8 uh, to 10 minutes by dr satish kaushik who is a consulting psychologist and a certified happiness coach he is the founder trustee of rajwala foundation which is a national level ngo working in palliative healthcare and education mr koshik has led many of the foundation's initiatives and has worked with four community radios in haryana and rajasthan on interventions promoting awareness about mental health and a couple of lines about smart smart brings with it over 20 years of experience in working with people from the most vulnerable communities empowering them with information it designs localized interventions catering to the needs of the community and executes them by working with over 250 community radio stations across india it aspires to bring the unheard and often ignored voices to the fore and project their narratives to the world right so uh, again uh, smart comes with a very uh, uh, it's a great uh, background and uh, i'll hand over the stage to ms archana kapoor tell us more about how they are utilizing this platform to address this issue over to you ma'am <laughs> thank you so much uh, kanal sadbir thank you so much uh, you know it's very interesting to hear everyone and it's also very interesting to see that how people are just dropping off from this panel from 120 uh, plus we are now just 70 uh, which is also an indication of you know what we do requires a lot of patience and uh, that self speaks volumes that we need that kind of patience uh to deal when we are dealing with such things so you've uh, already introduced us what we do and where we come from but what we actually do and what is very interesting and i have heard every speaker is that the emphasis on local issues local dialects and a local connect and i think that is what the strength of community radios is that we look at the local um, uh, we look at communicating in local languages and we are the ones who have a local connect and we keep in mind the local culture the diversity and and requirements of the community that we target each community radio station for those who are not initiated into it let me tell you reaches out to about 3.5 lakhs to some of them reach to about 7 lakh population and what ashish just said that we are actually a community based organization which has 
as it's uh, you know has information at, uh, dissemination at its core so what we do is we simplify very complex concepts whether it was during covid things like quarantine things like isolation things like rt pcr things like rat it is community radios that demystified these concepts and took it to people and tried to normalize conversations around it, take care of the fear, take care of the stigma, and tell people what is really happening. So when we talk about mental health, we are not counselors, we are not psychologists. As you know, we use Dr. Uh, Mr. Satish Kaushik to talk about you know uh, very uh, intense issues and reach out to people when they need help. But we look at mental health as a state of emotional and social well-being and when we talk about mental health we describe it as the capacity of individuals and groups to interact inclusively and equitably with one another and within their environment and promote subjective well-being and optimize opportunities for development and use of mental abilities. So for us, when we use this very generic medium, which is listened to by such a large population, we try to create an environment where people can speak up, where people can identify, where people can knowledge and where people can look at their immediate community uh, to uh, to help them get over um, certain crisis problems and which has a direct impact on their emotional and social well-being so um, coming to just the presentation I'll keep it very short so you know I don't want to get into the background because I know people are getting late but we all understand that there is a difference they're all experts I'm not going to get into this this was basically because when we work with community radios these are some very important aspects that we talked uh, about that you know mental health and mental well-being and mental illness and need of therapies and psychological treatment are two different aspects and uh, for us mental health issues are cannot be tackled in isolation because they have a direct impact on the social, economic and productivity issues also and entire holistic well-being of an individual. When we talk about mental health, and I don't think there is any uh, community radio which has not talked about mental health because COVID, it, mental health has been a problem for decades, but it came to the fore during COVID. And some of the objectives that were um, uh, kept in mind when community radios were making and producing and broadcasting programs on mental health were that we have to normalize the idea of uh, mental health, you know, uh, create an enabling environment where people can have conversations like Smriti said, the, where people can come and speak up without fear, without being, uh, without the fear of being judged or being, you know, um, called names by their own family members and community members to encourage people to seek help you know to understand that this yes there is a crisis which everyone is facing and if you are facing it too please seek help please come out please meet a counselor please talk to them please share your problems and then to strengthen the society all of you have mentioned about the role NGOs can play so here we were also talking about strengthening the capacity of civil society organizations which run community radios in a manner that they are able to address the needs of the most vulnerable people and of course um, many a times because as everybody has talked about there was lockdown people were not available a lot of helplines were not working staff was very limited how could we build the capacity of these community radios to take care of some of the issues which could be resolved by just having conversations by just keeping your lines open because community radio operates from within the community and is run by the community members and speaks in a language and dialect which everyone understands over the years they have the trust of the people and people feel comfortable talking to the anchors there to the rjs at the radio station so during covid a lot of people uh, sought to uh, you know reach out to community radios to talk about their issues for us some of the main issues which a lot of people have talked about but for us some of the main issues were the insecurity and uncertainty of the environment poverty and food insecurity which increased multifold times the loss of jobs and un unemployment which we were seeing happening in front of us uh, the social exclusion and we all know it i will not go into the details uh, on account of gender caste economic status sexual identity preferences and other things and of course the history of physical and mental abuse that has existed through generations 
now uh, i will definitely talk about the platform of community radio and why it is so uh, such a potent platform to talk about mental health is that uh, somebody mentioned i think it was smriti that you know when people write and you don't ask your phone numbers you don't ask them their names you don't do anything in the radio when people call because there is a number it was serves as a helpline number also people just dial that number and speak and seek for immediate response there is nobody you know it they want immediate response there are people uh, sitting at the other end women would like to talk to women men would like to talk to men so that kind of you know the 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 sensitivities of the community is that we work and have to be kept in mind and that is where the community radio plays a very important role it is accountable it is identifiable it is not somebody unknown to you because talking about very sensitive issues or what you're experiencing what you're going through the state of your mental health your social well being requires trust requires this need to know that you are talking to somebody who you can trust and that is what community radios do anonymity is there you can change your identity you cannot tell your true name you cannot tell you can hide the true uh, place where you come from your face is not an issue at all you can change your voice whatever you want to do and that is what gives them a lot of com- confidence as i have already mentioned it's a hyper local medium uh, embedded within the community so i'm not going to repeat and how do you do it you know so you understand because you yourself are from that community you understand the concerns of the community you understand what they are going through and you empower your audiences by talking about shared experiences and i think that is what is very important and that is what really helped because it wasn't that nobody is working in isolation nobody is experiencing these things in isolation the entire community goes through this households go through this and that feeling of community and connection works very well here and the as i mentioned the shared experiences so you know some of the issues that community radios dealt with um they are mental health and social well being issues but they were dealt with separately whether it was emotional whether it was financial environmental intellectual occupational physical social spiritual and there there are several other factors you know uh, the problems of children's uh, of children schools being closed uh, adolescent girls being at home young boys and girls sharing very very limited space sleeping in the same room men coming back domestic violence was a major issue all this was causing a lot of burden to uh, segments of the society particularly women and what is very interesting is that women started using community radio a lot to address the problem say i talk just about my community radio we about 2 206 women uh, called up the radio station in the last 2 years to talk about the domestic violence that they were going through and the mental health issues that they were facing some of the learnings are that you know um we've already talked about language we've talked about the fact that it is not an urban problem it is also a rural semi urban uh, peri uh, rural a problem mental health cannot be looked at in isolation uh, we have to understand the difference between stress and disorder um and only psychologists can't issue these uh, can't address these issues what we need is medical professionals and doctors which we try to get and that is where the tele uh, mental health centers can be very important for us um, and of course you know as you start talking the thing increases my last slide is what do we do as community radios so basically we are the first responders as we are there 24/7 available to the community we initiate conversations on mental health and try to normalize is this problem and we address stigma we uh, bang, debunk myths we talk about superstitions you know a lot of people believe jhad phook karke ho jayega ye ho jayega so you know we try to give them the scientific things about it we talk to them about issues people who are struggling with mental health also build that environment of comfort and concern within the family it's not only the community but even family members need to address and as people were saying you know people were not coming believe me during covid we had the maximum visitors because we are within the community people didn't have to go far and create this feeling of family and community centric support which really helps of course you need experts but just being heard just being able to talk to somebody is a very important thing that we as community radios did
Thank you so much for listening in. I am going to pause here. There's a lot to say, but I know that time is short. I want Dr. Satish Kaushik, Mr. Satish Kaushik, to just share a couple of uh, experiences of his and how he tackled some of the issues during COVID, post-COVID and pre covid the kind of questions which women he has been getting so many calls from women and if you see this photo this is dr kaushik here uh, he's gone to a college and he's talking to students and trying to understand what are the issues and when you look at an uh, rural area where women are not allowed to move out you just imagine the kind of stress and mental stress that they have and how it impacts the mental health so i am going to stop here over to you dr satish kaushik Actually, uh, initially we were uh, working through uh, our counseling centers in universities and schools. But later on, uh, the reach of uh, those uh, centers were very limited. And sometimes what happens that uh, they don't come to you for counseling. So what we did and uh, uh, I talked to uh, Archana ma'am and uh, she immediately agreed. And uh, I think uh, we started with the uh mevat uh, radio mevat or uh, counseling sessions there and the first program was uh, kashmakash where uh, people have uljhan or where have problems and uh, and you will be surprised uh, the, these problems it's not exclusive to uh, rural areas they are in urban areas also but only the the slightly scenario changes because the area in which we are working, it's a uh, slightly low income area, uh, but the community participates. And you will be surprised that uh, earlier we were thinking when we started this program, we were thinking that people will not call us. But uh, the children were calling, adolescent uh, largely they were calling, old people, they were calling uh, male, female, everybody was calling. So we used to get a lot of uh, calls also on that. but. Uh, what I have found is, uh, one is, uh, as Dr. Anand also said, and uh, Arjuna uh, also mentioned about that, the rural language. When we go to community radios, we, we become part of the community. And another benefit we, we, we get through community radios is that it becomes a discussion type of scenario. The, when the people start, uh, one is they, they share their problems. And the, somebody else is uh, listening to those programs. They also uh, chip in. And the actual what they did in that situation also comes to the community radio and it becomes a discussion. They uh, make benefit of uh, each other's experiences. That's, that's a very good uh, benefit of community radio. And you will be surprised that as uh, Ashraf M said, uh, it, it's about average uh, viewership of community radio is about three and a half lakh. And uh, you will be surprised that India has got more than 300 plus community radios. And if we start a program, so how much people and uh, uh, roughly uh, we can uh, cover about 10% of our population through community radios and through local languages whatever issues we have listened now here, uh, that can be tackled through local community radios. So that's a very powerful, uh, I have found, to reach to the larger audience. Uh, these community radios are, you can la reach to the last person at the grassroots. So that's the benefit. <laughs> and uh, usually uh, what happens, the, the problems are, sometimes the problems are what to do. Main kya karo ab? Uh, it's a counseling and uh, Ashna Vam rightly said you need people to talk to whom you can trust so the community radio provides those uh, parameters to counsel them so that's a uh, say I have uh, personally I have enjoyed and I think we have uh, it's about four five years and we are continuing with those programs with uh, different uh, styles and different uh, getting inputs and then changing styles and uh, talking to the people and uh, now the people they have somewhat they, they think huh, yes and uh, with our programs uh, other professionals have also joined so it has become a holistic health care that you have to take care because the impact of physical health affect uh, mental health mental health effects 
affect uh, uh, your physical health so the, the two have uh, to balance so that uh, because of our colleagues a uh, lot of doctors they joined in our programs and they keep on joining and in uh, covid uh, time uh, the online uh, through phones or through zoom sessions or uh, that has become uh, that that became quite effective at that time and we were able to uh, reach to the people during that pandemic time right thank, thank you. you so much thank you so much dr koshik i think it's been a very wonderful session uh we were almost crossing more than 2 hours now so we had planned it for 1 and 1/2 hours but then uh, some network issues and some whatever be the reasons i'm so happy not uh, not sad because so many people have left but i'm so happy that we still have 58 people <laughs> who are there uh, in the session and uh, still listening to whatever we want to share i am so happy that we as at act are associated with all three of us uh visa i will as well as uh, search and i'm so glad that we are doing work already in this sphere and i'm sure we're going to go leaps and bounds from here and uh, lastly i would say a big thanks to everyone who has been here all the audience who has been patiently listening to all the speakers all the speakers who have taken out time uh, smriti pranav ms archana kapoor Dr. Koshik, Ashish, uh, Dr. Arthi Bang, who's left. Dr. Natkarni, I'm sure he's also left. So he was a pretty busy man. Uh, difficult to get hold of. But I'm so thankful to all of you for being here and uh, being a part of this start. Right. The aim was to start uh, something, make an initiative, make ripples. I would say in this space. And I'm sure uh, this has got us going in the right direction. and we hope we are able to take it from here and uh, we are able to take all this discussion to a logical conclusion and we are able to scale all our platforms in a big manner utilizing the entire community which we have the ngos and other partners with which we are working so yeah thanks a ton uh, in the end again everyone thanks for being here and thanks for being a part of it